Ayan na, ayan na mga kameta, kamusta kayo dyan, kamusta kayo dyan, sinisigurado ko lang na medyo nag-live tayo. Ito, ito, sabi ko bago natin balikan yung Made in Martes 2, ay, I'm sorry, yung ano ba yung Marty or whatever, yung ano ni ano. Balikan natin yan kasi to be honest, hindi ko siya napanood nung, nung isang week kasi yung ilalabas na natin yung ano natin, yung peso natin. Sabi ko 300, ano ba, 360, 380, medyo hindi ko ma, hindi ko ma ano. Hindi ko ma-justify, di ba? Pero uh, upon further reflection, especially after kinausap natin si Parang Shao Chua, sabi niya talagang check mo ulit yan, interesting yung plot, etc. So, balikan natin yan mga kameta, alright? Balikan natin yan at papanoorin natin yan. Don't worry about it. So, eto, as soon as matapos tayo dito sa, ano natin, sa meta natin, babalikan natin yan. Wait lang, I'm just checking lang if may connection tayo or not. Kung magkano yung connection natin, parang may error tayo, no? One second lang ah, mga kameta. Bakit nagaganon siya? Wait lang ah. Na- nakikita niyo ba ako? Live ba tayo? Ba't parang hindi? Ayan. Ayan, okay, okay, okay pala. Okay pala. Good, 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 good. Okay, okay, okay. Ito mga kameta. Hindi ko kasi nakikita dito sa, ano ko, sa studio ko yung mga lumalabas na comments. Yeah, 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 okay. So, good, good. Ayan, alam mo naman, di ba mga kameta, alam nyo na medyo traumatized tayo kasi maraming beses na uh, hindi natin alam, biglang nakakat yung live natin or biglang nawawala. So, na-traumatized tayo dyan. Yeah, we always try to double check if everything is going on because naka-frozen yung screen natin dito. Anyway, mga kameta, balikan natin ito. Pag-usapan natin ang, uh, of course, chika minute muna tayo. No? Chika minute. Ito po yung latest na nangyari sa Oscars. Yeah, ni latest na nangyari sa Oscars. So it was a big night for Asian Americans. I'm very glad about it. Of course, it has been quite uh, a build up to the glorious night for Asian Americans kanina. Of course, nanalong isang Malaysian Chinese person of Malaysian Chinese uh, ancestry, yung isa naman nanalo from Vietnamese uh, ancestry. So big night din for ASEAN. Pag-usapan, pag-usapan natin yung mga victory na yan at saka what it could mean for for us Asian, for for cinema. Kasi balikan din natin ito sa issue ng Philippine cinema, mga kameta. Right? So, anyway. So, kanina nanalo na po for best actress. no For best actress and best supporting actor. no Dalawang Asian American for this fascinating movie na uh, meron tayo. Wait lang, let me get... Uh, and it yan, nasulat na natin sa article natin lahat ng mga bagay-bagay. Because I want to get the exact quotes right, mga kameta, no? Because they had very beautiful speeches that uh, they they delivered kanina. So I want to make sure that we get that. Aha, uh-huh, ito, ito. So, first yung kay Michelle Yu, di ba? Oh, so, ayon sa kanya, kay Michelle Yu, For all the little boys and girls who look like me watching tonight, obviously she's talking about Asian Americans, people of Asian descent. Uh, or ancestry. This is a beacon of hope and possibility. This is proof that dreams do come true. All right, that dreams do come true. So, meaning, shempring katulad nyan. Tagal niya nyan sa Hollywood, no? At saka international, um, international celebrity show for a very long time. But finally, now, when people were saying she's already past her prime, etc., this is where she had her moment of vindication. This is a big thing, and gladly, you know, she was able to win the top awards for. Uh, for best actress at yung mga kalaban niya, medyo bigatin din mga kameta, medyo bigatin at natatalo si Kate Blanchett at among others. Uh, ito yung movie nila na Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Now, alam natin, of course, si Yu, she was a um, beauty queen. I think she was Miss Malaysia before and then she went to Hong Kong and then from there, she really b- built her career and moved uh, forward accordingly. No? So, yun yung nakita natin context to dyan, mga kamet. Diana Jones ba yan? Yeah, movie. Bata pa siya nun, eh. So, he was a child star. He did very, very well as a child star. At now, after almost 30 years, so three decades of hiatus, when he was, you know, long after he almost gave up on his career, now he won, no? Now, what's interesting that it, interesting thing is that, actually, pinanak siya sa Saigon, and then later on, he ended up as a refugee with his family, war refugees, because Vietnam War. 1971, siya pinanak. So, within four years, Saigon was taken over by the communist North Vietnamese forces. So, na refugee sila. And in Hong Kong, which is also where Michelle Yu would launch her career because she was not doing as well when she was in Malaysia, you know, or her home country. So, interesting, it looks like Hong Kong is like the, the, the common thread, you no, know, in terms of their career. And then, 
he also acknowledged how important he is. Oscar's award was very emotional. In a way, it also cemented his position as one of the greatest comeback stories in inter the entertainment industry. From a child star that was almost completely forgotten now to Best Supporting Actor Awards, Oscar Awards in the United States. Now, he also said, similar to Michelle Yu, you know, he recognized that there's something bigger happening here. And sabi niya, I quickly realized that this moment no longer belongs to me. You know? Recognizing how his award also belongs to everyone who asked for change. Change meaning greater recognition for Asian Americans uh, in terms of their contribution to the industry and also appreciation of their talent. I mean, these are immensely talented people, no? I mean, Michelle Yu, matagal na natin siya kilala. I mean, all sorts of different movies. Comic, dark comedy, major romance, a lot of action movies. Di ba yung Crouching Tiger? Mga ganun siya rin yun, di ba? Uh, so, um, Charlie's Angels? Ando rin ba siya? Sorry about that. I mean, like, you know, I'm not a... Hollywood fan. Now, so we, we clearly see here, mga kameta, no? that the, finally the moment for Asians is arriving. Not only Asian Americans, but Asians in particular. So, uh, for instance, uh, the other year, well, Asian American too. I mean, Chloe Zhao, she was the first Asian woman to, wa to win the Best Director Oscars Award uh, the other year. Doon sa movie niya na Nomad Land. It's a beautiful movie. I really suggest you guys check it. It's a very intimate movie. It's a very emotional movie. It's a very... A uh, socially relevant movie that I really suggest you guys to to read and and, and and what I also love about that movie is the the musical score no uh, of course see kai Nadiran so check it out it's a beautiful movie uh, maybe we can do a review or separate vlog about those things now even more interestingly is what happened a few years ago when not an Asian American but an Asian a South Korean movie Parasite was able to win not one not two but four different Oscars awards, including an unprecedented first time ever, no? For a foreign, non-American, non-Western movie, the best picture. Of course, nala din siya ng best director at the movie na Parasite, which is easily one of my favorite movies in recent memory, no? I think kay Bong Joon-ha. Bong Joon-ho, sorry. Uh rin kay Snowpiercer, di ba? Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant movie. Uh, and, and I was even more impressed we discussed it natin ng konti yan, di ba, before mga kameta. When we were talking about the plots, when it, uh, I was even more impressed when he cited this work by Dostoevsky, uh, 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 yung movie na, ito, 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 mga kameta, pasensya Okay. He actually cited this uh, very, very, it's, it's a really a hunting book by Dostoevsky, uh, The Demons, no? How, kasi yung plot niya is, it starts with comedy, very funny lines, it starts, and then it goes into, uh, into horror and then ends up in tragedy. So that's also the arc that Parasite as the movie follows. So you know, ganon ka malalim magisip no, yung mga directors katulad na Bong Joon Ho and of course f really really good actors. And the good thing in this movie is that the actors were not there just because they were good looking or cute or K-pop look. No, no, these are really solid actors who are there because they were solid actors and they perfectly fit the requirements of such a compelling compelling screenplay and a compelling narrative as far as the movie Parasite is concerned. And of course, the movie ng Parasite, pinapakita niya yung dark underbelly ng Korean society. Of course, we know Korea as this kind of a dynamo, as a country of extreme technological sophistication, a country that was able to make huge strides economically over the last two generations alone. So we're very impressed with Korea, but there's a dark underbelly to that society. There's a lot of immense inequalities there, which is also captured by the movie Squid Game, you know? So in this, uh, or series, right? Netflix series na Squid Game. Na pinapakita rin dito yung underclass ng South Korea. People that we don't see as much in the usual formal like K-drama, blah, 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 right? This is, this is what I really love. Like, if you really want a deep, socially relevant movie, I think one of the best ever in recent memory is At Least Parasite. No question about it. It won the Palme d'Or. Sa, sa, it won the top award in Cannes Film Festival. It already won in Oscars. Really, this is, I think, really sets the standards for what you can achieve. And it's a movie of not super high budget. In this, gumamit ng mga super pakiut or guapings or maganda na actors and actresses or actors necessarily. No, it's really the narrative and the acting skills and the brilliant uh, director skills of Bong Joon -ha, Ho that really carried the day. No, and as I say, these are people who read, really read, including novels by Dostoevsky. So usually, like Dostoevsky, kasi alam ng tao, alam mo na, di ba, usually in crime and punch, mga ganon. Um, even the idiot. That was, that's a very interesting uh, novel. Anyway, um, 
so why is this important, no? Why is this important? Uh, this is important because, mga kameta, I think now, if you are an Asian, if you're an Asian, there's far more chance, there's far greater chance for getting recognition, rave reviews, or at least, you know, U.S.-based, European-based, uh, you know, uh, film critics and studios, etc., to just give a heck, you know, just give you at least a second look or give you a chance. No? And, and by the way, of course, hindi natin minention yung ating, our own Bida, you know, our own great actress, uh, Miss De Leon, who also has been giving, getting raving reviews for her recent, so I think Vanity Fair, from Vanity Fair interview ni uh, uh, Ma'am De Leon. Of course, Dolly De Leon did fantastic dun sa movie na uh, Triangle of Sadness. I didn't watch it, but I more or less know the plot because I was very, very curious about it. And, and it's, of course, the director of that movie is also a very interesting guy. Ito yung mga Scandinavian, dark humor, dark comedy, dark social commentary stuff. So I kind of like those kinds of movies too, no? Uh, so I'm also glad that we have one of our own, you know, Dolly De Leon, getting the kind of recognition that she, de- she, definitely, she definitely deserves. And, you know, based on the reviews that I, I actually at least saw, uh, her transformation, you know, she goes from a seemingly peripheral character in, in, in the movie dominated by all these Scandinavian white rich people and then suddenly you know boom she becomes the super dominant character and then of course there's a plot twist towards the end it's very interesting go and watch it for yourself or at least check the trailer it's fascinating so I'm really proud of having one of our own uh, like Mam De Leon doing so fantastic on the global stage and you know looking forward to more of this to more of this to more Filipinos there and hopefully Filipinos will play roles that are not the stereotypical roles. I mean, of course, you know her role, diba? She was, you know, and then... Okay, now, I mean, I hope, you know, Filipino actors and actresses get the kind of role that allow them to better express themselves, no? The, the, the full extent of their talent and get complex characters, not stereotypical characters. Oh, Asian, get into, or Filipino, get into, no? So we're hoping to get more of that. But as I always say, mga kameta, it's very important for us, aside from... Because, I mean, it's good to get recognition from the West and all because Oscars, after all, is the biggest, you know, award, most coveted award in the entertainment industry. But we shouldn't wait for recognition from outside. We should build our fundamentals on our own. And we should have our own standards on our own terms and not just wait for affirmation from outside. That's very important. Affirmation will eventually come. It's not like Bong Joo Ho and all these people were like, oh, what movie I can make so that, you know, people in America will love it. No, he wanted to just make a brilliant movie and he did it and... Ano lang, byproduct na lang yung mga all the recognition and everything that he, he has been getting since then. No? And I look forward to more movies by him. My thing is, if you look at Philippines, we have a long history of really brilliant creative uh, production. No? I mean, you can go from the golden age of Philippine cinema, you know, uh, all the way to the 60s, 70s, and even 80s, right, mga kameta? And then even more recently, you look at some of the historical movies, social relevant movies we're, we're doing. No, not too bad. Not too bad. Very interesting also. Uh, for instance, you movie ni Rizal ni Cesar Montana. I really appreciate that. And his Spanish was pretty well there. Pretty good. I was pretty impressed by his Spanish there. He was quite articulate. And I think that was really his best movie. Tsaka yung, anyan? Bagong buwan ba yan? Or something? Yung sa Mindanao na movie. Napanood ko yan. Bato pa Anyway, uh... Really good. And, you know, mamayang kay Robin Hood. Even more recently, that we had things like General Luna, for instance, which are really fantastic, fantastic movie in terms of, uh, you know, forcing us to re-examine our relationship with our history, our relationship with American colonial legacy, our relationship with our founding fathers, and also appreciating the complexity of the Philippine Revolution and what kind of dilemmas and everything was involved. And all of this was done in a way that appeals, you know, to the mass audience. So what I like about a lot of these movies that we have had in, in recent history is that they both meet market exigencies, market demand. So there are things that can generate income and interest. And at the same time, there's high quality. There's high quality and high impact and high political impact. Now, obviously, we can debate about historical accuracy. We can talk about the political implications, for instance, of Henry Luna, which I and Lelo separately, we, we kind of argued and realized that parang Kind of this was a precursor for Tatay Digong's campaign in 2016, inadvertently, obviously, but, but you know, by glorifying this foul mouth, strongman, 
supposedly maverick politician. No, so having said that, let's just be honest. Um, I don't think we are where we were uh, way into the two thousands because I remember in our, in the two thousands when I was traveling around ASEAN and all, including to Indonesia, uh, 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 other countries, and even hearing from some folks in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, they they do like. Pangako sayo, although they couldn't pronounce the pangako, like pangako, like, you know, some of this. But but they knew it. They knew Judean Santos, for instance, right? They knew a lot of our Jericho Rosales, for instance. They, they knew these people. They they were uh, uh, Christine Hermosa. But, yeah. uh, but, but so they, were, uh, they, they were familiar with our actors and actresses. You know? And they would ask me about, oh, you're from Philippines, this movie and not. So I'm very aware that across the Indian Ocean, well into the 21st century, Filipino movies were internationally... Uh, recognizable internationally followed there was really a market internationally and then things have really changed in the past 10 to 15 years no? I mean, we clearly see the dominance of the K-Wave I'm not necessarily a fan of K-Wave and I completely have no disagreement with people that are saying oh marami rin formalek yung mga K-Drama of course uh, except I don't bother to, to watch those ones the ones I watch are like Parasite for instance those kinds of movies really intense movies and, and the thing with, uh, with Korea is that yes they have a lot of formalek you know, Alamana, the usual stuff, diba? But they also have many fascinating movies and Netflix series and, and you know, and indie movies that have very unpredictable plot. The plot twists are really fascinating. They have a lot of cliffhangers. And, of course, the visuals, the graphics is so good. Sometimes as good, if not better, than the Hollywood counterpart. So they have the budget, they have the graphics, they have the plot twists they have also very good actors very good actors not necessarily again just always like when pocket are good looking people there are my ex models and like no not necessarily like that no really really you know people who know their craft masters of their craft no but having said all of that mga kameta you know because na misunderstand na misunderstood yung ano natin yung post natin about Lisa the other day Lisa Sobrano and all so let me just clarify no we're not here to belittle our own talent we're not here to say na hindi uh, maganda yung mga made in Philippines. No, no, no. As I said, we, we have had a great cinema. Up until early 2000s, mid-2000s, we had world standard, you know, like teleseries. Forget about it. And, and our indie movies are actually fast, really good. I mean, look at the Mendoza's um, uh, indie movies. Kaya nga, di ba, pinag-usapan natin yung kay uh, Coco Martin, no? before he was discovered and became this kind of a mainstream star, no? Matinee Idol. He was, you know, cutting his, you know, his trade. I mean, he was, he was establishing himself first in the indie movies and world class indie movies. And you have Pepe Jokno, many young directors. They're also coming with really high level kind of productions, winning awards in Venice Film Festival, etc. So, what I'm saying is that we have no shortage of talents. We have no shortage of great directors, and we have a long history of, of you know, a long golden era in the Philippine cinema. But the reality is that. In the past 10, 15 years, we're nowhere close to where we used to be. That's all I'm saying. Now, we can d debate about what are the criteria you're using. Obviously, I'm not, my criteria is not just, you know, my indicator is not just Netflix, right? I'm looking at so many things. You can look at, for instance, how many, how many Filipino movies are winning the top awards in the top film festivals, right? That's one indicator. You can also, of course, you look at the mass market and international mass market. Of course, locally, sariling atin. But I'm talking about international mass market. You can also look at that indicator. You can also look at critical reviews, you know, by, you know, people who know their stuff, right? So the, we can use many indicators. And I think if you use four or five different indicators and put them together, clearly we're not where we used to be or we're not where we should be based on the pool of talent that we have in the Philippines. Yun po yung sinasabi natin. So, kasi na-misunderstood tayo ni Bana, ito, baka binibalital natin yung Philippines. No, no, no. I, I, I say this, and I raise the Liz, uh, Lisa Sobrano critique precisely because I know we can do better. Because we have done great in the past. So, we can be great again. Yun yung point natin. But let me end on this point, mga kameta. No? Tapusin natin yung mga chika minute natin on this. No? Uh, so, what I'm saying is that we're living in a different side, guys. You know, we live in an era where Asian cinema is on the rise, where there is more and more receptiveness to Asian talent in the West, including in the West and globally. You no, know? this is the Asian century in many ways, and in the Asian century, Mahameta, I believe there's a lot of room for Philippine cinema to experience a renaissance, for Philippine cinema to be 
world class in the best way possible, no? Medyo mahirap tong usapan kasi I, I know it's like food, no? Parang feeling natin food natin, they appreciate, but we have the best food in the world. But my point is that, okay, we have the best food in the world, sure. But maybe it's good also if the rest of the world also knows that, right? So it's the same thing with the cinema. But the thing is, we have had really, really great movies. I mean, by many indicators, right? By many indicators. As I said nga, di ba yung mga pangako sa'yo, mga gana, alam na yung mga yan from, I don't know, from Mount Kilimanjaro to Kalamantang in Indonesia, whatever. Yung mga, from Africa to Indonesia, lahat alam nila yan. So, I want us to get back into that. In fact, nananotis ko nga dito sa ASEAN, mas sikat na ngayon yung mga Thai movies, no? I know that here in the Philippines, a lot of people are watching Thai movies, no? Especially some of them which have uh, more socially diverse themes, no? Very interesting movies coming out of Thailand. So, we have been there. We had greatness. Uh, and I think we can be great again. And for that, we, ha- we need three things, no? First of all, I completely agree with Pepe Jokna and a lot of other directors and all. There's the fiscal side and regulatory side to this, and the government should help. It could come with tax incentives. It could come with targeted subsidies, performance-based subsidies. It could come with different kinds of regulations that allow, uh, you know, that create the environment, the encouraging environment, the ecosystem for creative, new, dynamic, edgy, risk uh, um, directors and talents to push the envelope, to push the envelope. Because eh, alam ko yung sinasabi ng iba dyan eh. Sinasabi nila may cycle, di ba? So, ganito eh. Parang essential the argument is how do you break the cycle? They say, well, if you have a criticism of the movie in general right now, when I say our movies are, have to level up, I'm not talking about 100%, I'm talking about 60%, 70%, right? So, generalizations are the, about the majority of cases. So, you can always cite me many, many fascinating stuff that are coming out, teleseries that are coming out recently, including teleseries by, you know, people like Eric John Salot, uh, you know, the, the, the Enzo Williams. Oh, yeah. Sure, there are lots of good stuff that are coming out now. We're not saying 100% are, is a problem. We're saying that 50-60% should be leveled up and be more like the 40%, 30% grade, right? That's what we're saying here, Okay. So we never said, we may never made a blanket statement that all movies made in the Philippines are blah, blah, blah. No, many, there are many stuff out there which have great, great plots. But are they the minority or the majority? My sense is more the former than the latter, right? Now, anyway, um, going back to this, there are three things that have to happen. First of all, obviously, as I said, I agree with Weber Jokland, there has to be an element of regulatory government support, right? We saw that in Korea. We mentioned that previously. We saw that in many countries. There has to be support. It doesn't have to be so much dollars. It could be even, for instance, tax breaks. Or it could be, uh, for instance, like what they do in France. No, They make sure na hindi puro lang foreign movies ang nasa cinema. You have a quota system, right? So there are many ways to protect the domestic industries while pushing them to be more competitive and all. Hindi lang protectionist, but competitive, right? So... Targeted protection, targeted subsidies, no, especially for for kind of like startup versions, no, you mga new up and coming directors, talents, or, or you mga willing to take risks with more, uh, with plots that may not necessarily do well in the market now. Then my point is this: the Bayou argument is, well, the movies are like this because the audience want this, so chicken and egg down. But my point is, that's why you need to break the cycle. You need to break the cycle by creating really higher level and better and better movies and all. And the market will follow accordingly. It's a dialectical relationship. Uh, so speaking of that, the government has to really come in. Right? That's very, very important. Second, pioneers never had it easy. right? So anyone can easily argue, well, gagawin lang namin yung mabenta because otherwise the commercial viability is questionable. Getting sponsors and all is difficult. Making a sequel is going to be difficult because you may not make enough money and sometimes the ratio is 3 to 1, right? You have to make three times more than the initial expenditure for your first movie so that you can make, I don't know, the second season, whatever, second version. So I understand that. But that's the point of being a pioneer. You have to take some risk. It's not about having it easy. It's about doing the right thing. It's about pushing the boundaries. It's about making sure that you can introduce new genre, new flavors, and new standards into the mass market. That's really what we're looking at. And lastly, mga kameta, of course, we're looking at also our responsibility. Our responsibility. Madali na mag-criticize lang sa government. Madali na mag-criticize dun sa, oh, hindi magandang plot or screenplay. So, I, I un- understand if some people are criticizing us or are responding the way they're responding to what it is. I completely understand that. But I never said that we shouldn't also do our part. In fact, I'm trying to do my own little part, no? Uh, by saying, yeah, let's talk about how we can support the Philippine 
film industry. Hindi yung mga made in Marites types, no? Yung mga legit, no? Let's talk about how we can uh, put the spotlight on yung mga less known but very talented, very promising actors. Or, let's go and find really good Philippine movies that are not known. So, that's why I like, yung, may mga nagbabash sa atin dyan, but actually, they did it in a good way. It's not actually bashing, it's rebuttal. You see, pag nagbabash ka, you're asking for trouble because I'm gonna get back. But if you rebut me with information and all, I really appreciate it. No, So, in fairness here, for instance, at Twitter, I got a lot of people are responding by saying, what about this movie? What about that movie? Obviously, I haven't watched them, but I'm glad that they pointed it out. And we have to do more of that. We have to talk more and more about a lot of good Filipino stuff that we're not that aware of. Diba? And hindi naman tayo aficionado ng movie or hindi naman tayo 24-7 na film critique, right? We're not. I'm not an expert. But just because I'm not an expert doesn't mean I, 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 I you know, walang saisay yung sinasabi natin. No. As ordinary fans, supporters, concerned citizens, whatever you want to call it, we should do also our part. We should have a serious discussion, honest and sincere discussion. And we have to talk about Filipino movies and Filipino directors and Filipino talents who are, like Coco Martin, like not many people knew it back, back in the day. And then eventually, you know, he was able to make his talent accessible to the vast majority of the population and then ang provincial and the whole phenomenon, right? So there are also maybe a lot of other Coco Martins there that we're not aware of, no? So it's about that. It's about that. It's about helping up-and-coming talents. It's about encouraging the pioneers in the business. And it's about putting pressure on the government so that they give sufficient support, not too much, not billions of dollars, but few millions of dollars here and there can make a big difference. Uh, some quota systems here and there, some targeted protection and and uh, performance-based subsidies and tax breaks could make a big difference, right? So, yun lang sinasabi natin mga kameta. So, I, I hope we don't get overly defensive and easily triggered and all of that, no? Uh, I got triggered when people accuse me of, like, oh, you're imposing Hollywood standards. Like, hello, I don't even like Hollywood movies. Hello, like, you know, our standards are different, mga kameta. I mean, if you, you know, the kind of movies we watch are like this, diba? Just to give you an idea what kind of movies I like, diba? I like auteur movies. Ay, bakit parang Robin Hood lumabas? Okay, of course, I mentioned pa Parasite. But there are also other auteur movies that, you know, that I'll be more than happy to discuss and more than happy to watch, you know, like this. These are auteur movies I'm very uh, interested in, right? Really, the cinematography, the plot, the musical score. I mean, it's just brilliant. Or more recent one. Uh, and by the way, these are all Asian cinema. These are Asians. Or, for instance, The Salesman, again. Both of them did very well. I mean, like, these are the kinds of movies, mga kameta, na pinapanood natin as far as Asian cinema, world cinema is concerned. The plot is fascinating. There's a lot of moral ambivalence. There's a lot of narrative breaks. There's a lot of room for speculation. There's a lot of room for, for reflection. The acting is just absolutely brilliant. Uh, there's a lot of moral arguments that is going to go inside your head while we're watching it. There, there are a lot of anti-heroes in these kinds of movies that I really, really appreciate. So, so again, or for instance, if speaking of ambivalence, for instance, this one by Abbas Kiyosami, for instance, Taste of Cherry, which also won the top award in Cannes, is another thing. You know? In fact, the lead actor here is one of the lead actors. It's the actor of Baba in Kite Runner. So Taste of Cherry, for instance, which also won the top award. I mean, these are the things, mga kameta, that tick us you know, when it comes to really high level movies so we can go on and on I, there are more and more I can talk about and of course one of my recent favorites Parasite for instance like socially relevant or plot is complex and the acting is just out of this world right so yeah I'm not an expert but I'm not totally like you know out of nowhere saying things right that's what I'm saying mga kameta and you know what we, one thing we have to get used to in the Philippines is that we need people you know you know, the French had it. These are called public intellectuals, right? Who are supposed not to be expert in everything, but are, you know, have some basic, you know, uh, vocabulary to dabble in different discussions because culture, politics, economics are interrelated at the end of the day. That's why I always hated this turfing, turfing stuff. No, you want some local economists trying to keep it among themselves, some historians trying to keep No, I never like that. I, in fact, that's why I'm very glad that you know, economists doing history, historians doing politics, pol uh, political scientists doing economics. That's, that should be the way because we have to develop people with orchidaceous, kind of renaissance man, multi-level kind of understanding. Now, always, no, you're not going to always get it right. But the more you dabble in different issues, the more you see connections, the more you have lateral thinking, you broaden your horizons, and the more you're forced to learn and study and read it. I'm not like a literature uh, background, but 
I had to read all of these books. I'm not a philosophy background per se, but I had to read a lot of books on philosophy, etc. Because you have to broaden your horizons. Because it's only through interconnection, to detecting the, the, the connections, uh, you know, the nexus, right, among different fields of inquiry that you can come up with a better understanding uh, and, and sharper and sharper commentary on state of affairs. And lastly, let's not forget, you know, this is social media, especially on Twitter. I only have so much space and people have so much attention span. Uh, but, you know, we can go on. We can talk about hours about many issues, including about movies and about cinematography, etc. Not an expert, but it's someone who has a basic appreciation of these things and kind of also does a little bit of his assignment to read about the politics, the culture, the artistic, aesthetic dynamics behind these creative productions. All right. Thank you very much, mga kameta. I'll keep it here. Andaman natin pinag-usapan. And I'll catch you guys soon.